Tonight in Conference USA, the Old Dominion Monarchs come to Bowling Green to take on one of the hottest teams in the country, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, winners of six in a row. We welcome you courtside at Diddle Arena. He is Jeff Greer. I'm Nate Gatter. So glad to have you with us tonight. Jeff, when Western Kentucky was 2-6 and six in Conference USA and had an overall record under 500, who would have seen a six-game winning streak coming and a chance now with a win tonight to move into second place in the East Division? They are rocking and rolling, Nate. They are cutting down on their turnovers. They're doing such a good job on the offensive end, and it's made a huge difference in some tight conference games. Meanwhile, for Old Dominion, Austin Trice has been stealing a lot of the headlines in conference play. He has moved into a much bigger role for the Monarchs this year. Nine double-doubles in Conference USA action. The guy's averaging 18 points and 14 boards over the last four games. He has been huge for the Monarchs. Meanwhile, the uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers have been running almost everything through Davion McKnight, the sophomore from Shelbyville, only in his second year on campus. He's the only player in Division I averaging at least 15 points, five rebounds, six assists, and two steals. Just the true Mr. Everything. Yeah, and he holds the keys for these tops. I mean, everything runs through him. Uh, he can post up. He can find other guys. He's shooting 56% in this winning streak on two-pointers. So you just know that he's in control. He's the guy that needs to have a big game tonight for them. For Old Dominion, under the direction of ninth-year head coach Jeff Jones, one better than 62% of his game for the Monarchs, including an NCAA tournament a couple of years ago with a Conference USA championship. On the Western Kentucky sideline, it is the sixth-year head coach of the Tops, Rick Stansbury, perhaps a bit more embattled this year with how things went uh, during the middle portion of the season, just that 2-6 and six start in conference play. But the Tops have more than turned things around, and they have a lot on the line now tonight. We are ready to go from Diddle Arena, Western Kentucky in the home whites, Old Dominion in the blue on the road. Our referees are Kevin Mathis, Tyler Kumpf, and Ryan McCarty. Zimarion Sharp jumps against Austin Trice, and Western Kentucky has the opening possession. Right away, a turnover for McKnight, and that sends an early opportunity in for Jalen Hunter to put Old Dominion on the board right away. What a start on the road. And that is exactly the opposite of what Western has been doing so far in this six-game win streak. Their turnover ratio all the way down to 12% over those last six games. They've got to keep those under wraps tonight. Cam Justice having a great season in his swan song. Luke Frampton, the other shooter, off the mark. Jamarion sharp on the offensive glass with a putback. That is a big time play from the big fella. Long arm of the law coming down. The officials stopped play just to give a uh, flop warning to Old Dominion, but Jamarion <laughs> Sharp with the offensive rebound and the hammer. Where did that come from? How did he get that out of the sky? I mean, that was an incredible Inspector Gadget level reach with his arms. Old Dominion starting with Long Hunter. Ezekpe, Trice, and Kaiser. Kaiser wants a three. Rims out for him, and Frampton corrals the rebound, but Kaiser supplies a lot of the scoring, although Austin Trice has been taking on a bigger and bigger load as the season goes on. McKnight from the mid-range where he's so deadly. Same starting five for the Hilltoppers back in their zone. Justice and Frampton flanking McKnight with Hamilton and Sharp in the front court. Josh Anderson really the only player who sees any significant minutes off the bench for Western. Hamilton grabs the rebound from the long miss. Frampton wide open for three. That is exactly what Western wants to do. Old Dominion struggles defensively in transition. Western thrives in that scenario, and they just took advantage of that opportunity. Kaiser dragged the pivot foot, and he is called for the travel. One of the areas where Western Kentucky does have a substantial advantage is that three-point shooting. This ODU team does not shoot it well, and it's difficult to get a lot going around the rim where they normally like to score with the uh, seven-foot-five Jamarion Sharp standing under the rim. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating matchup today on the offensive and defensive glass for both teams. Old Dominion, a team that just can't really do much from the three-point line. They've got to do some work on the offensive glass to try to make up for that. Kaiser goes down low for Ezekpe. 
Harassed by Frampton. Tried to get rid of it, and Justice has the steal. Jerry is Hamilton for three. Sharp on the offensive glass, able to corral it, and Western Kentucky can reset to Frampton. He hits again. It's about as bad of a start as you could have for Old Dominion. They're not getting anything around the rim, and Western has gotten out to run off turnovers. Great first 15 seconds. It's all been downhill since for the Monarchs in Bowling Green. Trice against Sharp. Tried to shovel it in traffic to Ezekpe. McKnight the other way. All the way to the rim. Counted again. A 12-0 run for Western Kentucky. And you see this every game that Western plays. Jamarion Sharp's ability to just make every single person in the paint think twice about what they're doing. It doesn't always result in a blocked shot, but it can result in altered shots and turnovers. Ezekiel against Hamilton. Kaiser over Sharp, got the roll. It's a nice take from C.J. Kaiser. Game high, five threes the last time these two teams met. He's got to be a big time scorer for them tonight, outside and in. Justice for three. Everything's falling for Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers have hit six of nine from the field, including Three from deep. The 11 point lead already for the tops. Ezekpe comes free. Cramped in the rebound. McKnight for Jarius Hamilton. Almost hit Kaiser in the back of the head, but he didn't see it coming. Western keeps the ball. McKnight for three. Sharp still able to get a hand on the would-be offensive rebound, but could only tip it out of bounds. And Old Dominion is grateful for a break. 15-4 Western Kentucky, not even five minutes in, and the Hilltoppers have made it a double-digit advantage, looking for a seventh straight win to move into second place in the East Division of Conference USA. Western Kentucky has built an 11-point lead in the opening four minutes and change from Middle Arena in Bowling Green. Nate Gatter, Jeff Greer back with you on this Saturday night. Jeff Western has hit three three-pointers already, but that's uh, nothing new on this six-game winning streak. Yeah, 63s over their last six wins as they've gotten right back in Conference USA contention, and they've come out blazing hot tonight, three of their first six. And it's just unfair, Nate. I mean, if, if this team can get out and run, and you've got Cam Justice and Luke Frampton as your three-point shooting options with Jarius Hamilton as well, it just makes it so much more difficult because you're worried about Davion McKnight and you're worried about Jamari and Sharp underneath. Trice tried to go for the reverse, got it, plus the foul. Austin Trice shows no fear of Jamari on Sharp inside, and he goes to the free throw line. Trice has been nothing short of monstrous for Old Dominion, especially in conference play. He's uh, averaging nearly 18 points and a dozen rebounds in Conference USA games so far. That latter number leads the league. But of course, he's going to have his work cut out for him on the glass tonight. Yeah, they need a big game from him tonight. He struggled a little bit in their last meeting, just eight points. He did have 13 rebounds, uh, but they need him to be a scorer for them underneath. And that was a good start there to get something going underneath the rim. He's had 19 or 18 or more rebounds three times already in conference playoffs. Including 19 of them against Marshall in the loss on Thursday night. Josh Anderson in off the bench for Western Kentucky. Justice for three. Another one for the Hilltoppers. 45% for three-point range on this winning streak. And Frampton and Justice filling it up again tonight. Up to 26 threes now in these last uh, six plus games. I mean, ridiculous for me. Inside, a little bit hectic, and Ezekpe just drew the second foul on Jamarion Sharp in a matter of uh, not even 40 seconds. That's exactly what Old Dominion wants. They want to get the 7 5 guy off the floor for as long as possible. And 
Um, he's still learning in a lot of ways, which is incredible because he's two blocks away from the national leader, Walker Kessler, in blocks this season, but he's still learning, and you feel like he could even be better at it than he already is, which is crazy to say. And it's tough for him sometimes to, to allow contact while staying straight up underneath the basket. So Sharp checks out, and Luke Frampton hopefully enjoyed his 55 second rest, because he might not get any more for quite some time. Especially if Rick Sandsbury's gonna try to keep Sharp out as long as he can with those two fouls now. Potentially big stretch here for both teams. Western going small. They're gonna have to deal with a couple of really good rebounding guys for Old Dominion, and they've got an opportunity to now work a little bit more in the paint on offense, ODU, without uh, Sharp on the floor. Justice off the pump bay, got away from Kaiser, and got the bounce. <laughs> That's a shooter, shooter's roll. Zeke finding some space in the high post. Trice takes it on the high and low and lays it in. That might be the recipe for Old Dominion, especially now with Sharp on the bench. Yeah, nice high low find there. Good patience to find the right pass and a good finish. By the way, they called that a two pointer. Uh, they said that Justice did not hit that. Hamilton off the mark and rebounded by Zeke Pay, but that it was tipped in by Davion McKnight. That's the official scoring for the moment. Charles Smith, the fourth off the bench, couldn't hit the three. Hamilton lost it in traffic. Kaiser over Anderson. Trice battling, but the rebound ends up with McKnight. Anderson, he can fly, but it's swatted away by Ezekpe. Rick Stansbury wanted a goal 10. Kaiser wants a three. Trice on the follow. Smith another chance, and the third one finally goes down for ODU. You know, we talk about the win streak for WKU versus the losing streak, the five-game skid. During that five-game skid, their opponents were getting 14-plus second-chance points per game, and during this six-game win streak, it's dipped down to 11. It was nine and a half before that. Anderson off on the, make it Hamilton off on the three. There are some similarities between these two teams, uh, maybe not stylistically, but in the fact that they get very, very little production from their bench. Western Kentucky, because they don't play very many minutes with the bench, Anderson produces, but Isaiah Kozar coming in now doesn't get to play much at all, only a few minutes a game in uh, Conference USA competition. Old Dominion plays more minutes for the bench, but just doesn't get a lot of production. Thursday night against Marshall, five points, one rebound. The combined stats for all the bench players. So you wonder if uh, somebody can step up for them to take a little bit of the load off. There's a foul in the lane that will send Jalen Hunter to the free throw line. And they had high expectations coming into the season for Jalen Hunter. His dad is Kenya Hunter, star at Duquesne. He's on Mike Woodson's staff up at Indiana. And it's been a tough year. They had to replace their top scoring, outside scoring threat, Malik Curry, uh, who transferred to West Virginia. And it's just been so difficult for this team to get going from outside and create some scoring there. And they were hoping that Hunter would be one of those guys. So if they can get him going down the stretch, maybe he can help them out as the conference tournament arrives. Has been a very good free throw shooter this year, 83%, knocks them both down. And ODU has uh, weathered that early surge. Western Kentucky led by uh, as many as 11. And the Monarchs have cut it back down to six. Justice, skip pass for McKnight. Loves that mid-range pull up. Rebounded by Smith. Here's Makai Long, outside for A.J. Oliver. Anderson the rebound. And McKnight had to go through his hands and out of bounds. A Western Kentucky turnover, the second for the Hilltoppers, takes us into a timeout. 11 and a half to go in the opening half. Western Kentucky's lead trimmed to six. Conference USA Saturday night action continues when we return to Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. Hey, your top notch seats are sponsored by Muse Bowling Green Apartments.
Western Kentucky leads 20 to 14. More than eight minutes gone by in the first half from Diddle Arena, where early on, Jamarion Sharp at seven foot five was really controlling the paint at both ends of the floor. But that has changed after he picked up two fouls and left. How about Josh Anderson, a high flyer in his own right, getting rejected up against the glass by Kulu Ezekpe. And uh, then at the other end of the floor, Old Dominion has been able to pull in a number of offensive rebounds without Sharp's uh, imposing figure on the court. That is a big, big factor for ODU. They've got to be active on the glass. And with Jamari and Sharp out, but also with Western in a zone, they are prone to giving up those offensive rebounds. Old Dominion really does a good job of getting second chance points and putbacks. So both teams have to be wary of each other in that area. Jalen Hunter running the floor for ODU. CJ Kaiser not on the floor, getting a break. Monarch's leading scorer this year, although Trice has shouldered more and more of a load in conference play, averaging nearly 18 a game. Takes it on the block and goes to work on Isaiah Cozart. I wonder how long Western Kentucky can survive with that as a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, that's tough for Cozart to come in like this. Only made 13 appearances this season and is guarding one of the best scorers and post players in the league. McKnight lost the handle, and Old Dominion can cut it down to one possession. Hunter gets the screen. Trice wants it. Over Cozart, didn't get the bounce, and Justice grabs the rebound. Rick Stansbury wanted a foul, didn't get it. ODU has another chance. Smith for three. And this time a block out by Frampton sends both he and Oliver to the ground, and the foul goes on Old Dominion. It has been a physical start to this game, and it seems like it's only going to continue to grow in intensity. Yeah, and Isaiah Kozar did a great job there trying to work on Trice, but yeah, I mean, that's a foul. That's, that's a clear foul, knocking over uh, the guy with the clear path to the ball there in Justice. But the second call uh, was the right one. Look, this game's going to be physical. Old Dominion wants to absolutely scrap it up with Western. Western wants to create turnovers and get out and run. Expect a lot more of that tonight. Deflection by Hunter. We thought maybe it went last off McKnight, but Western Kentucky will keep it. And Jerry's Hamilton coming right back out of the court. Western would love to see a big night from him. He was the leading scorer for the Hilltoppers first half of the season in his first year after transferring from Maryland and uh, his numbers really dropped off precipitously in the middle part of the season. He was dealing with that back problem that cost him some time and then even when he was on the floor didn't look comfortable consistently but he's bounced back with four straight double digit games and seven rebounds a night over that stretch. Justice goes behind his back, Hamilton the pull up and he sticks it. And he just gives them such a different element when he can play the four for them. He can rebound a little bit, but he's such a good inside-outside scorer. ODU has been very deliberate at this end of the floor and then attacked the offensive glass. Trice shakes off Hamilton. Hunter, tough shot. Rebounded by Anderson, and the tops have numbers. Anderson lost his gum over the midcourt logo. <laughs> Frampton thought about the deep three. Hopefully nobody steps on it. Anderson from D. Got it! They are such a different team when Josh Anderson has it rocking. This is his best three-point shooting season in his long career here. He just gives them that extra punch, whether he's in the starting lineup or, as we've seen this season, really being the sixth man. Smith knocks down Frampton. Offensive foul. Officials the last few years in college basketball have become more and more willing to give this on-ball defender the offensive foul call even when he's moving his feet, but uh, Frampton did look like he got there first. And you just, if you're a ball handler, you just can't extend your arm. You just can't. I call it a chicken wing. They're going to see the chicken wing and they're going to blow the whistle. You just cannot do that. 
ODU closed it to four, but Western Kentucky is back out in front by nine. Make it almost 11, but Anderson couldn't finish it. Hamilton couldn't get the tip. McKnight in pursuit. Hunter for three. Big shot for ODU. That is a huge run of events there. And if they can get Jalen Hunter going, as I said, it gives them another option from distance along with Kaiser that makes them a much more dangerous offensive team. McKnight attacks Hunter. All the way to the rim, got the foul, <laughs> count it. Woo. Little mustard on the finish. A lot of traffic between McKnight and the rim, and he got all the way in there. That is exactly what Davion McKnight can do. He's been doing it for a long time in the high school days as well. And that just gives them so much more of that highlight reel ability around the rim. So you wonder where Western Kentucky would be this season without the emergence of Davion McKnight and the role that he has shouldered this season. He's had some help. Certainly Cam Justice returning to the team was a big boost. Long attacks. Hunter for another three. Back to back for Jalen Hunter. Looks like he's heating up. That is good news for Old Dominion. And gives them a really different element. It has to make Western Kentucky think twice about being too compact. Hunter with double figures now, the first player to reach 10 points for either team. McKnight pulls up, rebounded by Long. Kaiser pops free. He's been quiet so far. Long with seven to shoot. Into Hamilton, no call either way, and Frampton corrals it. McKnight finds a cutting. Hamilton, who's turned away by Ezekpe, but a foul. Timeout on the floor. Old Dominion has hung around and hung around. Cut it down to five. <laughs> Hamilton will have free throws when we come back. Tops by five with under seven to go. Western Kentucky leads 27-22 with 6.55 to go in the opening half. Nate Ganner, Jeff Greer back with you from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green where the Hilltoppers have led by as many as 12. Darius Hamilton will be at the free throw line after he was fouled by Kalua Ezekpe just before the break. This had a chance to be a highlight reel slam. It's really a smart foul though. You don't want to give away the momentum dunk as long as you make a play on the ball and you don't hurt anybody. It's a smart foul for your team because we know what Diddle Arena can do. I mean, if this place gets going, it is a very, very difficult place to play. And dunks like that are exactly what gets crowds going. So it's a smart foul. Yeah, they were feeling it early when uh, Western responded to a Old Dominion's first bucket with a 12-0 run to build a double-digit lead, stretched it to as many as 12 a couple of different times. The Monarchs have cut it down as close as four. Hamilton at the free throw line where he's at 66% this year. Western is just such a different team. When Jarius Hamilton is in there, he's got the experience from playing at BC and Maryland at a high, high level. And just a really, really good player for them this season when he's been healthy. There's a certain uh, size, speed, skill combination that you just don't see from a lot of guys at the level that he has it in Conference USA. And when he's been healthy, you do see it for sure. And he has the assignment on Trice right now. With Jamarian Sharp still on the bench after his two fouls in the opening few minutes. Kaiser steps back. Rebound pursuit of the perimeter. Crowd wanted a foul, didn't get it, and Smith hits the three. Good hustle by Charles Smith to get over there and bag the three. That's a big second chance point, or three points for Old Dominion. 
They're three of nine from three-point range, which is uh, quite good, actually, by their season standard. They shoot under 30% as a team from three-point range, third worst in the league. And they only make about four and a half a night. They've hit three already. Hamilton to answer. Got it. That's six threes for Western Kentucky in the first half. They are just so hard to guard because they always have at least three, if not four, guys who can shoot it. Kaiser has not gotten on track, and he turns it over. Hamilton has seven now. Skips it for Justice. Frampton for three. McKnight, the offensive rebound. Goes back up and scores. Davion McKnight at just six foot one with four Monarchs around him. That is just all heart right there. He timed his jump perfectly, and if I'm Old Dominion, I'm furious at that putback. Smith wants another. Justice the rebound, and Western Kentucky, just like that, can stretch it right back to double digits. Hamilton on his Ike pay. The help comes, and Trice strips it. Smith trying to get it to Trice. Anderson the steal, and he's fouled by Smith in transition. Talk about a smart foul, because Josh Anderson had a head of steam, and that was going to end with a rim rocket. <laughs> there is nothing more fun at Diddle Arena this season than Josh Anderson getting out in transition and rising up. But Old Dominion, look, when you're a team that prides possessions, they don't have a ton of them in the, in the games that they play. Their tempo is one of the slowest in the country. You've got to take care of the basketball because one, you don't have that many possessions, and two, Western wants to run out of them, and that's when Western is at its best. So you've got to figure out a way to make sharper, smarter passes. Justice had the hot start, but a lot of Hamilton of late. Frampton attacks all the way to the rim, and the tip goes. It'll come from either Frampton or McKnight. Official score is choice, but it's an 11-point lead. Timeout called by Old Dominion. Jeff Jones wants to talk things over. Western Kentucky just keeps stretching it back out. Old Dominion cuts it down, and the top's back up by double figures. 36-25, Western Kentucky, four and a half to go in the opening half. Western Kentucky up 36-25 as we head to the later stages of the first half at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green where Davion McKnight now has a game-high 12 points for the Hilltoppers, a third of their scoring, and he's uh, done it not insignificantly, Jeff, because of his rebounding at the offensive end of the floor even as a six-foot-one point guard. Yeah, he's a local kid from Shelbyville, and long arms for a guy at 6'1 to just do some work around the basket. He really isn't much of a three-point threat. And that, he's kind of an intriguing guard in that way, uh, but he is not afraid of uh, initiating contact. He's not afraid of getting on the offensive glass or defensive glass. And it just really is uh, a big thing to see your lead guy putting in effort plays like that on both ends. Western Kentucky shooting the lights out of this first half. Six of 13 from three-point range. Kaiser on the pull-up, still well contested by Hamilton. Izikpe, the offensive rebound and putback. That's where Old Dominion has made its money in this first half. Yeah, Kulu Izikpe has to be a guy for them tonight. He's got to get on the glass with Makai Long and with uh, Trice and, and really see if they can get some putback points on the board. Tough catch by Hamilton. He comes up limping. Anderson hits the three. But we're going to have a timeout now so they can check on Jarius Hamilton. That was really awkward for him catching that ball in traffic. And he immediately started favoring his right leg. And you hope that this is not anything serious. He has just been getting his legs back under him these last few games, starting to play at the offensive end the way he's capable and showed in the early part of the season. And more broadly for Western Kentucky, this is a team that just cannot afford any injuries. Already playing essentially a six-man rotation with Josh Anderson coming off the bench. And you can get a second look here at how Hamilton has to stop to try to avoid long and take some knee-on-knee -knee contact. Hopefully it's just a 
a little bit of a stinger that's maybe vibrating up and down his leg. You hope it's nothing serious for Jarius Hamilton, who's on his feet but headed back to the locker room. Yeah, and like you said, Nate, I mean, this is a team that just doesn't have a ton of depth. I mean, they have a few guys on the bench who are capable. Uh, we've seen Isaiah Cozart already tonight, and there's a couple other guys who I think could help them if, de if absolutely needed. A guy like Sherman Brashear who can fill it up at times off the bench, but Hamilton is such a key element to what they do to give them that versatility in the four spot. So hopefully he can walk it off, but look to be in a lot of pain. Jalen Butts is uh, injured right now. They do expect to have him back before the end of the season, the transfer from DePaul. He wasn't playing his last few games when he was available, but he has played some good minutes here and there for the tops and, and has a bit of a pedigree to him. Trice inside, couldn't get it, and Anderson the rebound. So here we are, 3.30 left in this first half, and ODU is playing a Western team that doesn't have Jamarian Sharp or Jarius Hamilton. They've got to find ways to get some easy buckets underneath and chip away at this 12-point deficit. Justice with a shot clock running down. Frampton, McKnight for three. And the rebound eventually falls to Hunter. Anderson just worked around Ezekiel again to steal the ball without even losing the dribble. McKnight happy to play slowly. Western Kentucky probably looking forward to halftime. McKnight scores, count it. What a take from Davion McKnight. This dude is so tough. I mean, we're talking about a guy playing 36 plus minutes a game, and he will put you on his hip, and he will keep you there. And again, those long arms not only help him be an effective rebounder at 6'1", but he can finish in traffic and after contact. He converts his three-point play. He has a game-high 15 points, and Western Kentucky now leads by 15, largest of the night. Tops beat ODU in Norfolk by 17 a couple of weeks ago. Ezekpe against Kozart. Still working on the pivot, left it short. Frampton had his hands on the rebound. McKnight scratches it away. It's a shorthanded Western Kentucky lineup at the moment, an undersized lineup for that matter. But this crowd has been loving the defensive effort. Justice fights off Kaiser in a hand check foul. That is the seventh of the half against Old Dominion, so Justice will shoot one and the bonus. Talk about Camp Justice, a guy who He's about 45 years old at this point. He's been in college for a long time. But uh, Kentucky Mr. Basketball, the third all-time leading scorer in Kentucky high school basketball history. The guy has a ton of pedigree and is a legend here in this state. I mean, there are people who know who he is uh, and remember him just from his high school days. And he has given Western so much more scoring to help Frampton kind of balance out that wing position. 80% free throw shooter, but missed the front end. ODU gets it back inside 90 seconds. Smith comes free, wants a three. Rebound knocked out of bounds, last off of Long, and Western Kentucky gets it back. But to your point on Cam Justice, if we already mentioned where would Western Kentucky be without the emergence of Davion McKnight into this bigger do-everything role, where would Western Kentucky be without Cam Justice coming back to play one final year of eligibility really out of nowhere and providing them with uh, almost 15 points a game. And he was a grad assistant and they discovered that he might have a nice bucket there for McKnight. They discovered that Justice might have some eligibility 
And hey, go put on your sneaks, man. Let's see if you can do it. And he certainly looks like a guy who's very comfortable at this level and has given them a huge boost. Tough shot from Trice. Good rebound by Anderson inside 50 seconds. That story almost makes you think, well, he'll be a good old man shooter. He'll stand in the corner, give you a few <laughs> points here and there. He'll shoot 40%. All that is great. He's averaging only a point off Davion McKnight to lead the team. And especially with the fact that Western Kentucky in the end never got anything from Zion Harmon, who didn't play for personal reasons and then left the team at the semester break. Never got anything from Keith Williams, whose uh, waiver was denied by the NCAA. And he, it turned out, had exhausted his eligibility. That's a lot of points that Western thought it would have on paper back in September. And Cam Justice has helped to make up a big chunk of it. Yeah, you started out in the preseason with Western, the prognosis being they could be really good if those two guys, Harmon and Williams, become eligible and can play for them. And to be able to then lose those two guys and replace them with a, a, a talent of the caliber of Cam Justice to round out this lineup. And you're right, I mean, he doesn't just make shots. He's a good passer, really good assist to turnover ratio. He's a good rebounder. We've seen him get on the glass tonight. Uh, just a big difference maker for them in addition to being that veteran presence. And somehow, some way, this team has come together after the 2-6 and six Conference USA start, even without Williams, even without Harmon. Looking for a seventh straight win. Frampton short and Smith the rebound. Seven game winning streak would match the longest the Tops have had in Rick Stansbury's seven year tenure. Six year tenure, I should say. Kaiser for three. That could get him going. That would be a big boost for the Monarchs in the second half. It's a good look in rhythm, catch and shoot. He is a guy who, if he can get going, he's a tough player to defend. McKnight on the fall away, caught backboard first. Trice can get something off here from half court and just hit the front of the rim. Western Kentucky led by as many as 17. The Tops take a 14 point lead into the halftime break, but uh, certainly Jeff, the storyline is gonna be Jarius Hamilton as much as anything. What did Western Kentucky gain in the first half and what might they have lost? Yeah, it's a big miss for him if he's hurt long term, hopefully not. But Western's playing really well with their starters and the guys they have on the floor. Back in a moment, 14 point WKU lead at the half. Western Kentucky leads by 14 as we get ready for the second half from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. Nate Ganner, Jeff Greer back with you on this Saturday night on ESPN Plus with Western Kentucky trying to make it a seven straight win, go to nine and six in Conference USA. FAU lost earlier today by eight to Middle Tennessee. And so that opens the door for Western Kentucky with a win to move into sole possession of second place. Although FAU would still have a game in hand and an opportunity to draw back even with the Hilltoppers having three games to go in the league after tonight. Old Dominion will have four. Jeff, uh, from the ODU sideline, especially considering Jamarion Sharp, we expect to see right back on the floor to start this second half. What would you be saying if you were Jeff Jones to give your guys a little bit of hope at ch chipping into this deficit? I mean, uh, I would be talking about finishing. Six of 11 on layups and dunks is not good enough. Seven of 20 on two-pointers, not good enough. You've got to figure out a way to get sharper around the rim. The turnovers have hurt them a little bit. Seven turnovers on 32 possessions. So clean things up a little bit and play a little tidier. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, of course, we saw Jarius Hamilton leave the game with an apparent knee injury at the end of the first half. This was him walking off at halftime. He did come back out to start the second half with the team and is on the bench. He has his warm-up hoodie on and will not start the second half, but he was moving around. He even sort of uh, went through the layup line to some extent, moving a bit gingerly still, so we will report anything as it comes. Here's C.J. Kaiser, held to five points in the first half. Trice couldn't bring in the rebound, and it's out of bounds off of ODU. And I know Kaiser is thinking there's a 7-5 dude right there. I'd love to see him try to get into Sharp's body. And I think ODU is going to have to spend the next couple possessions going at Sharp to see if they can get him to pick up that third foul and get him back to the bench. Western Kentucky has confirmed that it was a knee injury for Hamilton. His status at this time is uncertain. He's uh, 
icing his knee just away from the uh, main Western Kentucky bench. So I'd be surprised if we see him the remainder of this game, but hopefully he is okay going forward. That would be a major loss for the Hilltoppers. Trice got his hand on the lob. Kaiser. Jalen Hunter who leads ODU with 10 points. Goes inside to Ezekpe, blocked by Sharp, but follows his own miss. Good stick to itiveness there from Ezekpe. And again, with Sharp's ability to alter shots, you just have to stick with the play and see if you can get the offensive rebound and get another shot at it. Here's Josh Anderson starting the second half in place of Hamilton. Justice works on long, underneath, stepped on the baseline. And Western Kentucky turns it over for the sixth time so far this evening. The Tops have only averaged a little over eight turnovers per game during this winning streak. And when you talk about the difference that that makes, you're talking about five and a half extra possessions a game on average when you're slimming down your turnovers. That's a huge difference. Kaiser slips free underneath. He has seven. First four of the second half go to the visiting Monarchs. I'd love to talk about turnovers and percentages, Nate. I mean, that's ridiculous from Davion McKnight. 20% of Western's possessions during the losing streak resulted in turnovers. During the winning streak, just 12%. That's a huge difference over the course of a full game. Justice after the loose ball, pokes it away. Ezekpe retrieves, and he's tripped up inadvertently by Justice who is called for the foul. That's his first personal. And the first against the team in the second half. And look, you're okay with that. If you're Rick Stansbury, it's, a, it's an effort play. And both Frampton and Justice have been pests on defense, and that's exactly what you want. You want deflections and 50-50 chases and all that stuff. So you're okay with that foul. Hunter hit a couple of threes in the first half. Not a prolific three-point shooter. There's a foul called away for the ball against Old Dominion. It goes on Ezekiel Bay, and Western Kentucky takes it back on the eighth turnover by the Monarchs. And that's frustrating for Jeff Jones and his team. I mean, they just cannot afford to have empty possessions in this first five, eight minutes where they're trying to get back into this thing, get it back to single digits. Justice gets the screen. Frampton wants a three. Trice did well just to keep Sharp away from that rebound. ODU has been very deliberate at this end of the floor. Ezekpe with Sharp lurking. Has it blocked, but a foul. And if this is on Jamarion Sharp, it's his third. And it is on Sharp, who just got his third personal foul, and Western Kentucky is going to have to dip right back into the bench. Well, Zeke felt Anderson on him, and then I think out of the corner of his eye, he saw Sharp. And I got to be honest, the referee actually pointed as if the foul was on the over-the-top interaction, but he also got him across the arm on the lower hand there. That was where the foul was, but the referee didn't indicate that that's what he's, uh, he called which is why there's some frustration there. But again, it goes back to Ezekpe is backing into the post. He thinks he has a mismatch with a lighter guy guarding him. And then he sees Sharp and panics. And that is what Western can do to opponents when you have a 7-5 dude who erases a lot. Ezekpe back at the free throw line. He's at two or three so far. Splits that pair as well. It's an 11 point lead for Western Kentucky and Sharp stays on the floor with his three fouls. Rick Stansbury was very upset at that call. Sharp's pass is deflected by Trice. He gathers it back in. Western Kentucky a man up with Trice trying to recover. McKnight lost it out of bounds off of a Monarch and WKU will keep it with seven to shoot. It's a good defensive scramble there from ODU to avoid a situation that can be a momentum builder. McKnight had a trailer and sharp. He'd love to throw that lob if he could or finish at the rim. 
Frampton, what a block by Kaiser to go right up with him. Frampton recovers. McKnight couldn't get it. Sharp the stick back. Woo! Jamari and Sharp come on down. What a thunder dunk that was. And those long arms, they are just always a factor on both ends. Kaiser wants the screen. And dragged his pivot foot. Second time he's been called for a drag foot travel so far tonight. And Western Kentucky gets it back. Western has done so well forcing turnovers throughout the course of this season. It is kind of what they hang their hats on. They're not a great defensive rebounding team. Opponents shoot the ball pretty well against them, but when you have sharp erasing shots and guys who can keep the ball in front and force some turnovers, it makes a big difference. Josh Anderson. Justice deep three. Rebounded by Zeke Bay. Hunter finds Ezekpe, he's been active. Hook shot wouldn't go. Trice went up too early and didn't get the rebound in the end. He has only three rebounds so far tonight. McKnight was fouled on the floor by Kaiser. And that will take us into an official timeout. Western Kentucky leads by 13 with 15.43 to go in the second half. Jamarian Sharp missed most of the first half with foul trouble. He's back out to start the second, and he's made it count with a stick back slam. Tops by 13. Western Kentucky 48, Old Dominion 35, our score with 15 and a half minutes or so to go in this second half from Bowling Green on this Saturday night with Western Kentucky not even 16 minutes away from a second place spot in the East Division, which would give them a bye in the Conference USA Tournament in Frisco in a few weeks' time all the way to the quarterfinals and trim it down to only three wins required in three nights. Some good moments for Old Dominion tonight, no doubt, but uh, just seems like Western Kentucky keeps coming and keeps coming. Yeah, I mean, the dude is like an inspector gadget with his arms. I mean, they can extend. He's got a little pogo stick jump, jump to him. That second jump is real explosive. And he's just continued to learn the game to know how to read deflections off the rim. And Jamarian Sharp, a game changer for Western Kentucky after starting the year as a bench guy. Anderson wanted it, hit a deep three earlier. Attacks on Mackay Long. McKnight, Anderson left open. Extra pass for Justice, gets his three off and he's fouled. That was a nice little two-man game between McKnight and Anderson. Good patience. And then how about the unselfish play from Anderson, who's shooting north of 40% from three. He had a good look at it, but out of the corner of his eye, he saw another dude who can shoot it at a high clip at three and made a good extra pass and three free throws for Cam, Cam Justice. He missed his first one, front end of a one and one back at the first half, and still didn't look thrilled with the release on that one. But he gets it to go. 80% free throw shooter on the season. Foul line was always somewhere Rick Stansbury's teams dominated. A little bit less so this year, but they found other ways. This team in a lot of ways have ha has had to find uh, other ways to win across the board, other sources of production, but they've uh, found it time and time again. Yeah, they started slow, but as the course of the season has run, their free throw attempts to field goal attempts ratio has been pretty good. And that's exactly what Rick Stansberry harps on in all of his press conferences, all of his practices. That's what he talks about the most. Sharp affected that shot again. Trice gets the offensive rebound, but has it swatted back in his face. Frustration for Austin Trice tonight. Anderson to the rim. Sharp to follow again. You gotta shut the back door on the defensive glass or the big fella is gonna come and take your cookies. 17 point lead for Western Kentucky matches the largest of the night. Austin Trice is Conference USA's leading rebounder in league games, but he's given up 10 inches to Jamarion Sharp 
and it shows. Rebounded by Anderson. Josh Anderson has come off the bench tonight. He doesn't have a ton of stats, six points, five boards, but he's playing great. Crampton makes it a 20-point Hilltoppers lead. Timeout, Jeff Jones. Western Kentucky has been hitting time and time again tonight. Eight threes, better than 40% as a team, and they lead it by 20. Western Kentucky leads by 20. Jamarion Sharp missed large stretches of the first half with two fouls. He picked up his third foul in the early minutes of the second half. Rick Stansbury decided to leave him on the floor, and he's been rewarded. Six points, six rebounds, and three blocks for Sharp in only 11 minutes. And uh, with Walker Kessler at Auburn not getting any blocks today in their loss to Florida, Jamarian Sharp has now taken the lead as the nation's number one shot blocker with three tonight. And it, it, it's amazing the number three, you're like, ah, I mean, that's a, that's a good amount of blocks, but he's affected north of 10 shots around the rim just by being there. It's interesting, you were talking earlier, Jeff, about stats as percentages, often with turnovers we do that. Well, you can also point to Jamarian Sharp's block percentage, which is the number of two-point field goals by the opponent he blocks when he's on the floor. Better than 17% <laughs> of two-point shots that go up are blocked by Sharp, and that doesn't count the many others he affects. Absolutely comical. Izikpe gets the roll. ODU has still attacked. Not a very good three-point shooting team. They make their money in the paint. Izikpe and Trice haven't been scared, but uh, Sharp has been equal to it more often than not. Working around the rim, and it has to continue if they want to get back into this game. They got a lot of time left, but they've got to be more efficient around the rim. Here's Anderson getting the minutes in place of Jarius Hamilton. He couldn't finish at the rim. McKnight, another offensive rebound, and he's fouled by Trice, who goes down hard, grabbing at his right ankle. Austin Trice, who has been nothing short of a phenomenon for Old Dominion in Conference USA play, is down in a heap. And what a shame it would be for this game to cost Western Kentucky Jarius Hamilton, as it has for at least the second half, and Old Dominion Austin Trice. Averaging 18 and 12 in Conference USA competition. And he just got caught up with McKnight here, and it looked like he came down on Sharp's foot and turned that ankle right over. Yeah, I, I have a hard time watching injury replays, Nate, because I come from a family of people who have turned their ankles north of 100 times. I mean, it is so painful, and especially for a guy like Trice who leaves the floor with such gusto. I mean, he is. Uh, Great hops, and uh, you just never know who, if somebody's going to have their foot underneath you. You hate to see it, so hopefully the pain subsides here. But he has been such a fun player in Conference USA play. And it just stinks for Old Dominion to have their energy guy, their, their leader, have to be helped off the floor. Reigning sixth man of the year in the conference who uh, certainly would have repeated if not for being so good that he had to move into the starting lineup eventually. And uh, even tonight, when Sharp has largely stymied him, it's been fun to watch all the things Trice has tried to do to find a way around, despite the fact that he's giving up 10 inches on the block, which is essentially unheard of in a college game. And uh, he wasn't unproductive, still found his way seven points, six rebounds, had some, some good moments, just uh, not able to score nearly as efficiently as he normally does. 55% shooter from the field, the most efficient in the league in conference games, and he is headed back to the locker room, not putting any weight on that right ankle. Justice for three, rebounded by Long, so now both teams short a big piece. Big opportunity now for Old Dominion to dig deep and see if some of their other guys can step up in a big situation and get them back into it. Hunter hit a couple threes in the first half, but missed that one, and Sharp grabbed the rebound, probably six inches above the rim. <laughs> Davion McKnight leads all scorers with 19 points, 60% from the field. Justice with seven to shoot. 
Lob for Sharp. That's how smart Cam Justice is. He hesitated, waited for the screen, waited for the curl off that screen, the roll from, uh, from Sharp. And that's just how you maximize the talent that Sharp has, is find him in those situations downhill. Back to a 20-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Long on Anderson, Hunter for three. That's his third of the night, and he could be an answer for Old Dominion. It's going to have to be Hunter and C.J. Kaiser, most likely the rest of the way with uh, Semi Zeke Bay as well. It's a nice shot there, good in rhythm release. Thirteen for Hunter now. Sharp on the interior. He was fouled before the shot. Wave it off. The basket will not count. And we will go to a timeout. But Jamarion Sharp has made a massive impact at his return to the game. Now 8.7 rebounds to go with three blocks in just 14 minutes. And Cam Justice can find him at the rim. That's a high percentage shot for the tops. Western Kentucky leads by 17. Almost midway through the second half, back in Bowling Green, where Jarius Hamilton has officially been ruled out for the remainder of the game with a right knee injury. We will provide any further updates as they're passed along, but I would imagine that will be all for tonight, and Western will assess him and uh, hopefully have him for the three remaining regular season games. Meanwhile, for uh, Old Dominion, Austin Trice has also departed. He went back to the locker room, not putting any weight on a right ankle that he turned over coming down from a rebound and landing on uh, Jamarian Sharp's foot as it was planted on the floor. And we have not seen him come back out uh, even into the bench area, let alone onto the court. So both teams playing down a key piece at the moment. Two of the more fun players in this league and you hate to see them go down with injuries. Hopefully the recovery is quickly. Trice just looked like he was really in a lot of pain when he went down. So hopefully it was just in the moment. Hunter absolutely rejected by Jamarian Sharp, his fourth block of the night. And you wonder what his numbers could look like if he had played a few more minutes. He's at 14 minutes right now, eight, seven, and four is his stat line. Uh, of course, had a triple-double with blocks earlier in the season. Look at this. Jalen Hunter is a six-foot legacy of a college basketball player playing high-level Division I basketball, and Jamari and Sharp just blocked him like the 12-year-old playing with the <laughs> preschool kids and pick up basketball. Anderson misses and Ezekpe rebounds. As you noted a few minutes ago, Sharp now officially the nation's leading shot blocker again. Ezekpe gets to that one first, and Sharp is called for an inadvertent goaltend, got his hand maybe on the wrong side of the rim. Funny thing is, his head is at the rim as he's jumping, and he's trying to get his hands out of the way, and his hand goes through the rim. 15-point lead for the Hilltoppers, who have been up by as many as 20. McKnight out to Frampton for three. Hilltoppers have gone a little bit cold from deep. Giving ODU a bit of a window. Kaiser, tough pull out. Sharp after it with Ezekpe, who got the position and won the battle. Smith for three. And Sharp claims this one. Yeah, I'd like to see them get better looks on offensive possession. See if you can move Sharp around and get to the rim. Anderson, off balance, hits it. Western Kentucky has spread the scoring around. McKnight has 19 after that. Frampton nine, Anderson Sharp Justice, the other three on the floor all have eight. Western Kentucky has not made a single substitution in the second half. Might be the story for the tops for however long they're without Hamilton. Kaiser had it stripped. ODU keeps it, but only three on the timer. Basically survival mode here in this one. You're just trying to nurse your guys timeout to timeout. There are so many timeouts that you get some rests, but 
you're Western, you're just happy to get Cozart some minutes to get that experience in case you need it. Hunter mid-range, and he got it. Sloppy from Western Kentucky to allow uh, such a good look with only three seconds on the shot clock. Ironically, ODU, for a team that is just not shooting high percentages really anywhere, is actually one of the best late shot clock offenses in the country, and it showed there. They got a good look. Western has been a little bit more deliberate in the second half. McKnight took a lot of contact and was fouled on his way to the rim, and he stays down. And I think Kazikpe got nudged a little bit into him. I don't think that that was just Kazikpe in. No, no, it went right into him. That's a heavy hit. But how about the fearlessness of Davion McKnight? This dude does not care who is under the rim. He is going to go right at him, and he is going to absorb whatever contact it is and either draw the foul, finish at the rim, or finish at the rim and draw the foul. McKnight has two and gets the first. Looked like Ezekpe might have also inadvertently come down on McKnight's foot as he was prone on the floor, but uh, he seems to be okay. Thankfully, this game hasn't claimed any more star players. We've had more than our quota. 21 for McKnight. Timeout called by Rick Stansbury with the Hilltoppers up by 17. And McKnight certainly has uh, controlled just about every phase of this game with perhaps the exception of the restricted area, which has been patrolled by Jamarian Sharp when he's on the floor. Obviously, a lot will hinge on Jarius Hamilton's health going forward, Jeff, but look at the remaining schedule for Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, and then a home-and-home -home against Marshall to finish out the year. Not that any team in this league can't beat any other, but that's not a particularly daunting set of three games for the Hilltoppers, the way they've been playing. That would give them an opportunity at maybe even closing on the, the top seed in the East and, and taking potentially a 10-game winning streak into uh, the conference tournament, which would be quite a storyline and uh, quite a narrative surrounding them heading into Frisco. Yeah, as we said at the top of the broadcast, there were some conversations about Rick Stansbury in Western Kentucky, how things had been going. It was a five-game losing streak, a losing record. They've been so close three times losing in the Conference USA championship game in the tournament. And this team looks now like a team that has a, a great opportunity to enter that tournament with a real shot at competing for a title. North Texas and UAB, two teams that I think should both be in the NCAA tournament, played a heck of a game today. Those are gonna be the favorites, but they're on the other side. So Western will figure to only have to beat one of them. It's a tall order, but uh, if they're going to be hot, I mean, I, on a neutral floor, that, that might be a 50-50 proposition. Old Dominion basketball down by 17 inside of 8.50 to go in the second half. Ezekpe on the baseline was able to corral it, but Smith had relocated, and Ezekpe was getting rid of it all in one motion. There was, of course, as you mentioned, plenty of frustration among the WKU fan base, which has high expectations in the middle of a season when the Hilltoppers were struggling. But they've uh, certainly righted the ship in February, despite never getting any contributions from the aforementioned Keith Williams or Zion Harmon, both of whom were headliners back on in September, at least on paper. Long follows up the miss, fouled by Sharp, and count the basket. That's a fourth personal foul on Jamarion Sharp, and it'll send Old Dominion to the free throw line. And that's a guy who I was starting to wonder if we were going to see him get involved at all. Makai Long, between him, Azeek Pei, and Trice, they've got 72 or had 72 putbacks coming into this game. He's got to be active on the glass. And without Trice there, and it's good to see him back on the bench, but that's a big time finish. And you get Sharp, his fourth personal foul, with 8.30 to go. Again, Rick Stansbury's going to leave him on the floor just as he did earlier in the half with a third foul. Of course, uh, some of that WKU fan frustration, as you see Austin Trice there, who has come back to the bench after that right ankle issue earlier in this half, 
But uh, a lot of that frustration was directed to Stansbury, as it always is at the head coach. But uh, Western Kentucky Athletics Director Todd Stewart was steadfast in his support of his head coach. Uh, in fact, Jared McDonald uh, had a great story in the Bowling Green Daily News a few weeks ago when the toppers were at their lowest point. They were 2-6 and six in Conference USA, had a below 500 record overall. Justice leaves it short and Kaiser the rebound. And Stewart made the point that Stansbury had earned the right to turn things around, that WKU had had success even with other programs, allowing their coaches time to fix their struggling teams. And wouldn't you know it, since that article came out, six straight wins for the tops and looking at maybe a seventh tonight. Yeah, there's no reason to pull the plug or even think about it at Western. I mean, this is a team every year with Stansbury here, you know they're going to have talent. You know they're going to be able to put in this case, five, six, seven guys on the floor and be as good as anyone in Conference USA, and that's exactly what's been the case as this thing has played out. Big offensive rebound for Sharp with this Western Kentucky lead down to a dozen. Anderson finds Justice. Frampton wide open. A big miss. Rebound out of bounds and last off of Luke Frampton, who was sprung into the deck. And Old Dominion will get it back on the other side of this media timeout. 7.24 to go in the game. Western Kentucky's lead is down to 12 in Bowling Green. Western Kentucky's lead is 12 with 7.25 to go in the second half from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green where Old Dominion has managed to close the gap a little bit even without Austin Trice for most of this second half. Western Kentucky had a couple of chances on this possession, couldn't get it. The officials said it was last off Luke Frampton, and they were briefly looking at this play, maybe for some kind of shove on Frampton, something like that, because they couldn't have overturned the out-of-bounds call on review. Either way, the uh, play has stood exactly as it was, and we are ready to return to action. Trice, by the way, is still putting little to no weight on that right foot and ankle. He's getting up off the bench for the uh, the timeouts when ODU huddles up, but having to be helped to and from his seat. Seems to be still in decent spirits, but uh, we hope the, the very best for him, even if he's not able to return to this game, that hopefully he can help ODU going forward. Yeah, you hate to see a guy who's that impactful, who's had such a great season, have to miss any time with injury as Ezekpe took the ball off the face. Smith and Ezekpe just not quite on the same page. ODU has been living in this zone the last uh, handful of minutes and had some success because Western Kentucky has gone stone cold from three-point range. Justice wants one. Off the heel, Sharp the offensive rebound. McKnight, twisting drive. Last off of ODU and Sharp will keep it with 13 to shoot. But uh, Western Kentucky has missed now eight three-pointers in a row. It was a really hot first half, but just eight of 26 now for the top, so barely over 30%, well below their season average, and certainly the number they've been shooting on this winning streak. And I like what McKnight did there, trying to break down defenders off the dribble. You've got to get into the zone if you're not making shots. McKnight for Justice. Another miss, rebounded by Zeke Pay, and Jamarion Sharp just went over his back, and he is finished. That is a fifth personal foul, and Jamarion Sharp picked up his third early in the second half and stayed on the floor. Got his fourth a couple of minutes ago. Rick Stansbury still left him out there, and now he's finished for the final 631. So Western Kentucky will be without both Jarius Hamilton and Jamarion Sharp. And that's where there's still some learning. Uh, some growth uh, or opportunity for learning this game. Sharp needs to know in that situation, you've got four fouls. There's three ODU guys there. You don't have to go after that one. So Isaiah Cozart in for him. He had not played at all. That was the first substitution of the second half for Western Kentucky. <laughs> Almost 14 minutes having gone by since the break. Cozart, a finalist for Mr. Kentucky basketball in high school. It's a good big guy, 6'7", 235. Hunter in transition after another Hilltoppers miss. Long goes over Frampton and an offensive foul. Frampton and Justice, along with Davian McKnight, are just such smart defenders in transition in the half court. And he just beat him to that position. 
And even if your legs are moving, you can't, you can't take a guy out at the position if he beat you to that spot. I would think Western will be very deliberate now with a double-digit lead. McKnight couldn't get it to go. Kozar pursuing it, but Hunter comes away. With Kaiser in transition, somehow the pass got through to him. And Hunter sets it up. Smith for three. Big shot. Western Kentucky's lead is down to nine. It's a bad time for Western to be in a scoring drought that's nudging four minutes. A quick 8-0 burst for Old Dominion. Helltoppers are triggering their offense very far from the rim against this Old Dominion zone. Kicked by Smith. Western Kentucky keeps possession. It's a moment, too, when I would imagine it's even harder for Austin Trice than it already was to be watching from the bench because you have thought the final six and a half minutes with no sharp on the floor would be Trice's time to take over. So ODU is doing it shorthanded as well, even if they're only down one player and the tops are missing two. McKnight for three. Another Western Kentucky miss. They're piling up, but the tops have found enough offensive rebounds. Just one of 13 from three in the second half, Nate. Got to find another way to get shots away. Anderson wants one. Another offensive rebound. Old Dominion is having success with his zone, but not on the boards. And when you play zone defense, you take away a lot of things, but rebounding is always going to be difficult. But this is what I want to see. I want to see Davion McKnight and Josh Anderson in particular try to take guys off the dribble against this zone because, look, you're one of 14 now from three in this half. You've got to find another way to manufacture some points, get some rhythm back. And I know Rick Stansbury is going to be telling them, get to the free throw line, score some points that way, and just eat up as much time as you can. McKnight back at the free throw line where he's hit four of five so far. That was the eighth team foul on ODU, so one more one and one for Western Kentucky, and then the double bonus the rest of the way. The Hilltoppers have only been called for four team fouls so far in the second half. Inside four minutes, Old Dominion trails by double digits. Kaiser on Anderson, tough pull up, got it. He's had a tough go of it tonight, but that's a nice pull up jumper, just four of 13. And if you're gonna go, if you're gonna make this a, a close game, you need guys like him to start making shots for ODU. He scored in double figures in 20 of his 26 games. A first year Monarch on his third school. They need more from him. Ezekpay was straight up according to the officials and affected that shot from McKnight. Stansburg is furious with that. And, and Ezekpay was straight up. Drives on Cozart, Hunter for three, sticks it. Six point game, and the Diddle Arena crowd is just as incensed as their head coach. That's a big turn of events there. You go from potential trip to the free throw line on one end to a five point swing with the three there. And we've got a ball game here, Nate. Timeout called by Rick Stansbury. He's gonna get after the men in stripes, but Old Dominion is flying back. No field goals for Western Kentucky in more than seven minutes, and the top's lead is down to six. Old Dominion is uh, not a prolific three-point shooting team. Under 30% for the year, they only make four and a half threes a game, the fewest in Conference USA, but they've hit some big ones in this second half, and now seven in the game, Jeff, to make it a six-point deficit. Charles Smith coming up big. Bagging a three, and Jalen Hunter, for the third time this season, has four threes in a game. Old Dominion is 2-0 and in the previous two in those games, Nate, so they've got some, uh, some climbing to do in this one, but he is keeping his team in this game. 
13th time he scored in double figures this year. Had a career-high 20 against North Texas. Of course, one of the powerhouses of Conference USA back in January. He's just two off that now. 18 points, only nine attempts for the field. Kulo Zikpe has uh, gone for 12 points and 11 rebounds. A lot of tired legs out of the floor as well. Only 15 players combined have appeared in this game between both teams. McKnight misses, but Anderson follows in style. Clear the pool, here comes the cannonball. Anderson with the flush. No Jamari on Sharp, no problem when you got the high rise of Josh Anderson. Kaiser over Kozar gets it to go beautifully, and he's at a double figures for the 21st time this year. That's a tough bucket for Kaiser. He's come alive here the last couple minutes. First team old MEAC selection at North Carolina Central last year, moved up into the bigger conference at ODU, and he's the Monarchs' leading scorer in nearly 15 a game this season. Where does Western Kentucky go for buckets? Frampton attacks, lost it. Hilltoppers will keep it with eight to shoot. In the first half, the answer was the three-point line. But in the second half, just one of 14 from deep. And they have done a little bit of a better job here. Last couple possessions of trying to drive. Got to get to the free throw line. There you go. Frampton does it. Kaiser call for holding Frampton going around the screen. That's the fourth personal foul on C.J. Kaiser, so the senior from Baltimore is in danger now of fouling out, and Luke Frampton with that as the ninth team foul against ODU will shoot the final one and one for Western Kentucky in this half. It's been a tough night shooting for Luke Frampton. Three of nine from three, but he's got six rebounds, and he's doing a good job here getting to the free throw line. This is a guy, Nate, one of only two players in Davidson history to make 100 threes. Can you guess who the other one was? I was going to say, I'll give you <laughs> one guess. Pretty good company to keep, so it's rare for him to struggle from long range, but he's doing it in other ways to help Western tonight. Eight point lead again for the Hilltoppers, who have led by as many as 20. ODU led for all of 31 seconds inside the opening minute at 2 0. Western Kentucky promptly went on a 12-0 run. Smith misses the three. Anderson claims the rebound, and the Tops can push it back to double figures. I want to give a shout to Josh Anderson. Ten points, seven rebounds, two steals, two assists. He's had a really good game off the bench tonight for Western with Jarius Hamilton injured. Western Kentucky has only had one field goal in the last nine minutes, and it was Josh Anderson on the high-flying follow dunk. He wanted the three. Kozar grabs the offensive rebound. The Tops can run 20 more seconds off. Been a spirited crowd at Diddle Arena this One evening. And they can player. taste it. Justice late in the clock. And he was held going to the baseline. So he will head to the free throw line for two. Fifty-five point seven seconds to go in the second half. Western Kentucky leads by eight. And Cam Justice back at the free throw line where he's made just two of four so far tonight. He had the hot start to the game, hit a couple of threes on his first two attempts. He's missed all six he's tried since but has still been a critical ball handler for the Hilltoppers, just one turnover. They have only eight as a team, right in line with what they've done over the course of this six-game winning streak that looks poised to move to seven. The shooting numbers have dropped off considerably in tonight's game. They've been shooting 51% for the field, 45 from three-point range over the streak, just 39 and 26, respectively, this evening. But it doesn't look like it's going to matter. A three-pointer goes down out of the corner for A.J. Oliver, the second. Redshirt senior from Birmingham in his third year with ODU. After uh, transferring from Clemson, his hometown school, had a much bigger role last year. Much less heralded this season. Not even two and a half points a game, but he hits a three to keep ODU in it. Down by seven with 43 seconds to go in the game. And Jeff Jones uses a timeout. In fact, Jeff Jones was uh, teammates 
at Virginia with A.J. Oliver's dad, Anthony. Or uh, I should say Jeff Jones was an assistant at UVA when Anthony was there. Jeff Jones, a Kentucky boy from uh, Owensboro, left his home state to play point guard for the Cavaliers' 1981 Final Four team alongside three-time National Player of the Year and future number one pick, Ralph Sampson. Never left the East Coast since. Spent 16 years at UVA, including uh, most of the 90s as the Who's head coach. Took him to an Elite Eight. Briefly an assistant at Rhode Island and, and the head coach at American and ODU, where he took them to the league title in 2019. Been a tougher road this year. And hopefully they haven't lost Austin Trice for any substantial stretch of time. Ball tapped away in the backcourt, and it was last off Davion McKnight. Rick Stansbury wants it reviewed. ODU was signaling all along that it was their ball, and they got the call on the floor. Rick Stansbury is three or four steps out of the court demanding a review, and he is going to get it. Who last touched that? Rick Stansbury has been frustrated for much of this second half with the officials. And that continues now into the final minute. This would be a big turnover to give over to you an opportunity to cut the deficit down potentially as low as four. That certainly looks like it was last off McKnight from that shot. D'Angelo Steins, the true freshman from Columbia, Maryland, just checked in for the first time to play defense there. He was in the area, but doesn't look, based on that angle, that there's going to be anything to overturn this, and Old Dominion will keep possession. So Davion McKnight just couldn't catch the pass cleanly. Only the ninth turnover of the game for Western Kentucky, but could prove a costly one, and that it does open the door for the Monarchs. Seven-point game, final 38 seconds. Jalen Hunter has been the man for ODU. He finds Smith. Three is too strong, rebounded by Anderson, tied up by Long, but a foul. Josh Anderson will walk some 80-plus feet to the opposite free throw line, where Western Kentucky has made 13 of 16, 81% so far this evening. Two free throws for Anderson with Western Kentucky in the double bonus. It's his first trip to the line tonight. He has 10 points. And uh, everybody was moving off the first miss, but he gets another one. Anderson, one of four Hilltoppers in double figures. McKnight leads the way with 23. Frampton has 11. Anderson and Justice each with 10. Jamarian Sharp fouled out with eight. Jerry's Hamilton departed with seven points in his 14 minutes before a knee injury late in the first half. Oliver works the baseline. And what a costly turnover for Old Dominion. The kick out went to Ezekbe, who was standing on the sideline. And Old Dominion is going to call another timeout. It looked like Jeff Jones was signaling for one, maybe just calling in the defense. Western Kentucky had a turnover that looked like it might be costly, and now Old Dominion might have just put the nails in the coffin, turned the ball over, went down by eight. After getting a turnover and then split free throws, Justice is fouled. But ODU had the chances. Western Kentucky led by seven. ODU got the ball back there, and then Western Kentucky only got one point on the ensuing trip, so a couple of buckets, and we could be looking at a three- or four-point game right now. Instead, Justice has two. Free throw line was a little bit of an adventure for him early on. He looked frustrated with himself to have made just two of his first four, 80% shooter on the year, but he's hit three in a row since then. Here we go. 
And one more for Justice. <laughs> 10 points down for ODU, and not a lot of time. Hunter falls away, banks it in. 15 and a half to go. Timeout, Jeff Jones. His final timeout. The deficit is eight for ODU with 15 and change to go. And they are into miracle territory here. Monarchs with a loss would fall to five and nine in Conference USA. They came into the day a game ahead of Charlotte, or a game behind Charlotte, I should say, for fourth place in the division, but more importantly, a game ahead of sixth place FIU, who won today over Rice, which means that with a loss, the Monarchs would fall into a tie for sixth place in the division. And of course, those sixth and seventh place teams in each division have to play each other just to play in to the Conference USA tournament. So finishing sixth or seventh means the road to a conference title would mean five games in five days. Western Kentucky is playing for the opposite. A win would move the Hilltoppers into second place alone, although FAU behind them by half a game would have the game in hand. And the Tops would be playing for the chance to get a bye not only through that playing round, but through the quarterfinals to put themselves in a position only to need three wins in three nights in order to secure a Conference USA Tournament Championship, which is, of course, the one jewel that has eluded them in the Rick Stansbury era as successful as it otherwise has been overall. And what a story it would be if the team that could finally get Western Kentucky back into the NCAA tournament, started Conference USA at two and six before running off, if they finish the job tonight, a seven game winning streak, which would match the longest of Rick Stansbury's tenure on the hill. Justice is fouled again and will head back to the free throw line. Nikai Long just picked up the foul, his fourth. Only a second and a half came off the clock. And Justice has two. This is the 45th all-time meeting between Western Kentucky and Old Dominion. And the series was tied, 22-22, coming into this evening. So a win for the Hilltoppers would give them the one-game advantage. They'll be back in action at Middle Tennessee, 6 o'clock Central, next Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. Smith for three, off the heel. Anderson the rebound, and that will be all. Western Kentucky survives to win by nine. Even with a first-half injury to Jarius Hamilton, and a second half foul out of Jamarion Sharp with six and a half minutes still to go. The Hilltoppers win it by a final of 73 to 64. They've made it seven wins in a row after a two and six start in the league. They are nine and six in Conference USA and have moved past FAU for second place in the East Division, which would have to qualify as an awfully successful Saturday in Bowling Green. Stand by for just a moment. We will rejoin Jeff Greer, who will be uh, down courtside to meet with Davion McKnight, our player of the game, who played all 40 minutes along with Cam Justice for Western Kentucky. McKnight finished with 23 points, seven rebounds, and one assist. He turned the ball over only twice. Western Kentucky did not shoot the ball nearly as well tonight as past games on the winning streak. The old toppers shot the ball very poorly in the second half from three-point range when they were just one of 15 from beyond the arc. But they found a way to win anyway, in part because they still limited their turnovers to just nine. They out-rebounded a very good Old Dominion team on the glass by two and turned them over 13 times to uh, help the effort. Old Dominion led for 31 seconds in the first half, and that was all. So let's go talk to a man who played all 40 of those minutes. Davion McKnight is with Jeff Greer. We're here with Davion McKnight. Davion, you lose Jarius Hamilton at halftime. Jamarion's struggling with foul trouble today. What does it say about your team that you were able to walk out of here with a win? Uh, I know my team always ready. When the next man, when the next man's get called up, we're ready to play. You obviously had a huge game tonight, 23 points. You played really, really well. 
What went right for you tonight? Uh, just my teammates trusting me. Uh, they know I can make the right plays and me being in the right spot at the right time. This team now, seven wins in a row. What's going right? Everything right now, we're uh, we, we getting a good uh, groove right now. We're playing, get, playing together well. We're just winning. Last thing then, what, what do you want to see your team doing here the last couple of games, go into that conference tournament with some momentum? Keep doing what we keep doing. Um, I just hope we get to that tournament. Well, we'll see how it goes. Davion McKnight, good job tonight, man. Big win for Western Kentucky. 23 points from McKnight as he helps the Tops get a big win. Western Kentucky wins it 73 to 64 over Old Dominion tonight to make it seven wins in a row, tying the longest streak of Rick Stansbury's tenure on the hill. And they move into second place in Conference USA's East Division at nine and six in the league. They will return to action a week from tonight, six o'clock central on the road against Middle Tennessee. That game is on ESPN Plus, and then finish it out with back-to-back -back games in the regular season to, against Marshall. So some rivalry matchups still to come for the Hilltoppers. Old Dominion will play FAU at home in Norfolk, seven o'clock Eastern next Thursday. That game is also on ESPN Plus. So for Jeff Greer and the rest of our fantastic crew, here in Bowling Green, Nate Gatter saying so long from Diddle Arena, where Western Kentucky looked like it was going to cruise in the first half. A 12-0 run in the early minutes, a 20-point lead at one point in the first half. Old Dominion cut it back down, cut it back down, got within six in the late stages, but it was not quite enough. Tops beat the Monarchs 73-64. So long from Bowling Green.